Welcome to episode two of the Department of Social Services annual, fourth annual health and wellness conference 2020, the virtual edition. I'm Robert Frank, the director of HRD, and in this episode, you're going to see the following. Andrea Huber is going to be joining us and she's going to be sharing a health and wellness tip specifically about resilience. We will have Stacy Dunmire from HRD joining us and she will talk about working remotely, specifically about creating a functional workplace within your own home. And finally, Judy Bassini is going to take us through how to navigate to SharePoint remotely. Now, I said episode two uh, because episode one really just launched uh, as we're wrapping up uh, putting together episode two. So first, I want to thank everybody who gave us the, the great feedback about episode one. And most importantly, I'd like people to know if you didn't have the chance to watch episode one, it's available to you. All our episodes are being saved on our very special YouTube conference site. They are also being uploaded to HRD's SharePoint page. So you won't miss a single episode and you can go back to them as often as you like. Now, I also want to give you a, a tip here. Please uh, keep an eye out because within this episode, you'll also be hearing from Kim Willer from our EAP program with Evacor wonderful resources available to the county and specifically to DSS from that program. So enjoy episode two. Thank you. Hello everyone. I am so grateful that I'm able to speak to you today about resilience. My intention for the next two minutes are to do two things, explain what a resilient person looks like and to list some skills of resilience. So what does a resilient person look like? It looks like a person who is not immune to stress and problems. It means you know how to be tough in the face of stress and problems. And then you can bounce back quickly, just like Tigger. A resilient person can maintain that growth mindset. Now, let's say for instance, we are all makers of rockets. Our rocket crashed, but we're not stuck there. We maintain that growth mindset. We can eventually figure this out, how to get this rocket to go and do what we need it to do. So we keep building our rocket and our rocket crash again. We feel pain, we feel frustration, but we don't let us stop that from learning what we can from this crash. We build another rocket and we launch again. We stay objective about what's happening. We don't invent stories about why the rocket crashed. We gather evidence, we ask lots of whys and to try to figure out what actually happened. So we are also zoomed out. We know that in order to eventually land a rocket, we're going to have to crash a few. Crashing is part of the process, and one failure does not mean the end of any rocket that we ever want to build again. Now, something to remember when we zoom out to, if we zoom out too far, we could begin to say, you know, nothing really matters, all my processes are pointless, and we lose meaning. We don't want to zoom out too far, we want to zoom out far enough so that uh, we can keep um, objective as to what happened. Now, remember a little note about resilience. This doesn't mean that resilient people enjoy failure. They just know how to learn from it. I'm gonna quickly go over some five skills of resilience, things that you can do to help learn this behavior of being resilient. Number one, writing down positive outcomes from a particularly bad situation. It will allow you to stop ruminating and begin to see the silver lining. Don't try to talk yourself out of fear. So what you want to do is chip away at that fear. 
you want to celebrate your little accomplishments out of um, learning how to get closer and closer to conquering that fear. Don't judge yourself, have self-compassion. Now, confronting yourself in times of suffering, you want to do that as though you're talking to your best friend, your sister. Number four, practice mindfulness. When negative thoughts creep into your mind, that means that the positive ones are seeping out. There are many ways to focus your bodies, something that I talked about as far as progressive uh, relaxation in episode one. Now, lastly, it's tricky, so we're going to try to let go of grudges. How? Well, you can acknowledge what's happened, including how does it feel? How does it affect your life right now? Then you make a commitment to forgive, which means letting go of resentment and ill will. But it doesn't mean that you're letting any offender off the hook or to reconcile with them. I really appreciate your time. I appreciate you listening to me, and I hope that you will take this and uh, have it be useful. And as always, thank you for spending your time with me and again with Tigger. Have a good day. Evacor EAP is a free confidential benefit provided to you and your dependent family members. The purpose of this benefit is to provide you a menu of resources to assist you with reducing, resolving, or receiving a referral for any situation you may be experiencing. In addition, we also have a broad network of master's level licensed and credentialed EAP providers. Questions about the program or would like to speak to an EAP counselor, please call us at area code 716-712 2777, or you can reach us toll free at 1 888 276 6632. What works best for remote workers will vary from person to person, and that's okay. The most important thing to remember is to find what helps you stay focused while keeping your work separate from your home life. Establish a workplace that is separate from the rest of the home. It should be an area that mentally prepares you for work mode. Locate the work from home spot where you will be the most productive. It doesn't have to be a dedicated office with a door that closes, which is often not an option in smaller living spaces. Ideally, you'll want to select a spot that's both away from potential distractions like the TV or the refrigerator, and that receives good natural light. This could be a separate room, a small desk set up in a corner of the living room, or a laptop at the end of the kitchen table. Select a place that other members of your household know is designated for work. Make it as ergonomic as possible. If you can, find a chair in your home that's comfortable and also provide some back support. You could also use a pillow or draped blanket to help with the comfy factor. Make sure your workspace is located near a power outlet so you can plug in everything you'll need at the same time. You will also wanna set up sufficient lighting in your workspace, maybe a sunny spot near the window. And if you need more lighting, you could borrow a lamp from another area of the house. Adding a little personality to your workspace will make it a more satisfying spot. Bringing over a plant from another room or moving a favorite picture could make all the difference. Oh, and welcome to our next session in trying to reduce the stress of working on our PC at home. And today's session is going to be um, showing you how to access online trainings. And there is a pre-developed file out there that really walks you through reaching all the different sources that we have for training, or at least most of them. We have HSLC, Training Space, Skillport, and others. Um, and we're going to start out by, of course, I'm in VMware because I'm working remotely. And I'm going to get into SharePoint because that's where we have it stored. It's in SharePoint in the HRD area. And to get into SharePoint, once again, if you remember from our last session, we're going to go to Internet Explorer and I'm going to double click on it. 
takes a few seconds to come in. And you should see a screen that looks similar to what I have here. All right, I said it's located in HRD. So I'm going to find the HRD site. A um, little tab up here. Do you see that? I'm going to click on that. All right now we're in the human resource development section of SharePoint, Erie County DSS SharePoint. And I can scroll through. I know we've talked about the uh, Health and Wellness Conference site there that we can go to. But today we're going to go down to the bottom here where it says Training Resources. And I'm going to double click. When I'm in the Training Resources section, you'll see Training Resources, of course. And in here, the one we're looking at to go over today is how to access the training systems. And I'm going to double click on that. All right. And you'll get a screen that should look like what I have right here. I find using the down arrows to be most helpful as they walk me through a little slower and that way it doesn't blur up because it's trying to pull it in so i can go this is what's going to be found in this section we have hslc logging in locating we have training space using center port to access training space uh, skill port logging into skill port all right and on page two we start with hslc just like it says in the table of contents there are some hot links in here that you can use. You should be able to just double click on those hot links. All right, and we're just going to go down a little bit further and see what else we have here. It shows us how to log in. And Brandy Anabzak's got her showing us how to log in. All right, locating your trainings on HSLC. Your current registration page. And again, I'm not going to take a lot of time at this because you really should go in and look at it yourself. Just going to show you where it's located and what's on it. Checking your training history. That's another big one a lot of people like to look at. And then we get into training space. And again, there's hot links as well here. really is handy to have up if you're doing some trainings on a particular day I leave it right up on my uh, desktop All right log in using your 14 number of course for training space and click on the center port application it will walk you through that it tells you what you're gonna see all right and it walks you through where you should find it on center port and the last one we're going to look at it's going to be skill port. And again, just like we did with all the others, it's going to show us how to log in. Accessing mandated trainings, which I see I got a couple of I have to do, so I think probably everybody else does too. All right. And that's pretty much it. We're on page 12 of 12, so we're done here. When you are done, you can just close out on the X at the top right-hand corner. And it's going to say close this tab or close all tabs. We're just going to close the current tab in case you have other things up. All right, and this is again where we started out. If you're done here, once again, you can X out. And it brings us right back to our desktop. Look forward to seeing you next week. Stay safe. And so that concludes episode two of the Social Services Health and Wellness Conference 2020. Thanks for joining us. Thanks to the HRD team for putting the episode together. Special thanks to Stacy and Judy and Andrea for their segments in our episode. And I want to encourage you all, remember this is your conference. It belongs to the staff of social services. So please forward any comments, suggestions, 
feedback to us, recommendations. Uh, Ms. Eloff will take those by email, share them with us, the team, and we will incorporate them into future episodes. Perhaps we'll even have a guest visitor on an episode coming up. Speaking of guests, uh, we are so fortunate to have as a companion segment to episode two, a presentation done by Evacor, Kim Weller, who is our contact person for our EAP program. Evacor has put together specifically for DSS a presentation outlining all the wonderful services that are available to us and for free through our EAP. And so we're very fortunate to have that. We're going to post that. That's posted already up on our uh, YouTube channel for the conference. It's also available on SharePoint for the and on the conference page of HRD. So until episode three, be kind and be well.